You know those bricks around the Dexter lawn area that go up the hill towards Baker? You know, the ones on the screen right now? Have you ever wondered what their coefficient of friction is? Yeah, neither did we. But suddenly, a physics project rolled around, so we became very curious very fast. We decided to use Jensen's skateboard to test the coefficient of friction between his wheels and the bricks. We had Jensen ride his skateboard across a relatively flat, cobbled surface for two separate trials. For the first trial, we measured the acceleration of the skateboard at a low velocity and used dynamics to analyze the force of friction. First, what we did was we had Jensen go on the flat ground on his skateboard to try and calculate acceleration and the force of friction from there. So, following the protocol, skipping panic because that did not look pretty, this is the force diagram of everything, all the forces that we see on Jensen. We have force of gravity, which is completely counteracted by normal force, seeing that Jensen is currently plummeting through the Earth towards the center of the planet. So these cancel out. We also have the force of friction pulling him back, slowing him down just a little bit. So from the two different videos, we have we use Tracker to get two different accelerations, negative 0.1965 meters per second squared, and negative 0.1091 meters per second squared. We average those two to get an average acceleration of negative 0.1529 meters per second squared, which we will use in the calculation. We also looked at the mass of Jensen and his skateboard. Together, they are 64 kilograms. So the sum of forces on Jensen in this video is going to be the only the force of friction as gravity and normal force cancel each other out. So from this, we know that mass times acceleration equals the normal force times the coefficient of friction. So this is what the equation looks like when we plug in some of our numbers into these variables. And this is what we get when we solve for the coefficient of friction. Masses cancel out. Solving for the coefficient of friction, we get negative 0.01529. Oh wait, it's negative. That's not really supposed to happen. So what we can do is redefine our axes so that this is the positive direction. That means that acceleration becomes positive. We get rid of all of these negative signs and we get a positive coefficient of friction. We then used the energy lens to see if we could get a similar result. So as the skateboard moves across the pavement, we know that the kinetic energy that it has at point A is going to be equal to the kinetic energy that it has at point B plus the work done by friction. With some rearranging of this equation, we can find mu. The next step gives us one half, and v1 squared minus v2 squared is equal to the force of friction times the distance of that force applied. The next thing that we need to do is split up the force of friction in order to get normal force and mu out of it. So we can say that this is equal to m g, which is normal force, which is set up on the ground times mu, which is what we're solving for, and then times this e. Now we're going to divide both sides of the equation by mgd in order to solve for mu. This equation should give us mu. I should have done this in the previous step, but the mass is cancelled, so we can get rid of these 64 kilograms. As you can see, we get mu of 0 0.0186, which is very close to our previous mu of 0 0.0152. The two values that we got from mu are close enough to attribute the difference to errors in measurement. 